So here we are in early 2022 and Peloton, which had been one of the most popular stocks and popular products of the last two years during the pandemic, finds itself at the biggest crisis of its history. How did it get here? Well, the trajectory changed and Peloton essentially was not able to react quickly enough or with agility to change in demand. And then one thing led to another and uh, they've had to halt production and it has really created a lot of chaos for them and dented their brand. Prior to the pandemic, Peloton was already a company to watch. It was growing by leaps and bounds. A lot of people just liked that added convenience of having uh, an exercise bike that was connected in their home. Of course, uh, COVID comes and then the lockdowns start and then the whole thing exploded and more and more people ended up uh, wanting to have home gyms and Peloton fit in perfectly. So uh, things were, went great for the first year and then of course the lockdowns ended and things started to return to normal a little bit uh, and people could go back to the gym and you know let's face it Peloton is a pricey item so it is a niche product and so then it, it bumped into reality. But slowing demand was not the only challenge that Peloton had to face. There were some unforced errors on their part. Uh, there were recalls, uh, accidents involving one of their treadmills, and the company's reaction to it and, and its tussle with, uh, with the federal government. It ended up being um, unnecessarily uh, adversarial, and it cost Peloton um, some PR points of the public. It made them seem tone deaf, and it really pointed to a company that was starting to get intoxicated by its own Hubris. And they were famously in late 2020 were dealing with a lot of backlog of products and they were promising people uh, they would get their Pelotons in three weeks and then they would show up three months later. All this sort of ended up creating an impression of a company that was um, a little disorganized and having trouble meeting customer demands. It was clearly a sign of how important Peloton has become to pop culture when it was featured in the Sex and the City reboot as well as in the TV show Billions being uh, depicted by characters using it and having heart attacks. That's not the message that Peloton necessarily wants to project and it did earn the company some criticism from some Wall Street analysts saying that the company had been slow to react and uh, had lost control of the narrative. So in the last couple of quarters um, the problems that Peloton has faced have really compounded one another. For example, example, the company sensing opportunities in treadmills, in strength equipment, overestimated demand and they also misread how willing uh, younger people, perhaps with a little bit less income, felt about the product and the company ended up lowering its annual sales forecast uh, in late 2021 by a billion dollars because of what they said was unexpected drops in demand. At the same time, they're dealing with slowing demand on their flagship product. They're trying to introduce new products, the strength and the treadmill, and it ended up being way too many things for this uh, young company to take on. In early 2022, Peloton just didn't seem to be able to catch a break and the woes that had started in 2021 continued. It ended up saying that it had hired McKinsey to help it figure out a better cost structure. And let's not forget that a year before they had hired uh, for $500 million a company that was supposed to help it meet demand. So they went from not being able to meet demand in late 2020 to having too much inventory a year later. And so all this has generated a sense of a company that is going sideways and the shares have fallen 83% from their high about a year ago. So a market cap of 50 to billion to less than 8 billion. And that inevitably attracts activist investors who would like to see the company improve its performance. One of them has even called for the CEO, John Foley, to step aside and let a more experienced team come in. Peloton can take a little bit of solace in knowing that um, others in the connected fitness space are having their own challenges. iFit has uh, pulled its IPO facing uh, similar uncertainty around demand. And Mirror, which is now owned by Lululemon, cut its uh, revenue forecast. So it's tough going. Uh, this is a niche market. And now with people's uh, return to their old uh, exercise habits, it's an even tougher slog for Peloton. So it's clear that there's been a lot of pain to go around in the connected fitness uh, area. But in the case of Peloton, a lot of its pain is self-inflicted by its own mistakes.